guys, welcome to Talking Money with Nozi, personal finance made simple. Today's video is an attempt to answer a very common question that I get. And the question is, what should you invest in or which investments are best for you? Before you decide what products to invest in, you need to ask yourself these two questions. The first question to ask yourself is what are your financial goals? What is it that you're trying to achieve financially and when do you want to achieve it? The mistake that many people make is that they start saving or investing without answering this question first. And what often happens is that many people end up putting their money in the wrong places, which leads them to not achieving their goals. For example, if you want to grow your wealth over time, you can't put all of your money in a savings account because the interest that you earn from saving is usually below the rate of inflation. And you cannot grow wealth if your investments are not growing above the rate of inflation. Also, if you want to save money that you need to pay school fees for next year, for example, you can't put that money into shares on the stock market because the stock market is very volatile in short periods of time. And the chances of losing your money on the stock market in short periods of time are very high. So guys, start with first things first. Take a pen and a paper or open a spreadsheet on your PC and write down all your financial goals as well as their timelines. The second question to ask yourself is which type of investments or assets can help you to achieve your goals? Generally, traditional investments fall into four main types of asset classes, which are cash, bonds, real estate or property, and shares or stocks. Each of these asset types have different risks and different returns, and which one is suitable for you depends on your time frame, which is how long you want to invest. Okay, guys, let me show you the performance of those four main types of assets. And I'm going to use the data from the South African Savings Institute. As usual, I'm going to leave the link to this website so that you can come and read for yourself. It says the four asset classes or principal investment markets are cash, bonds, property and equities. And it says the characteristics of the asset classes are as follows. Cash is the safest asset class and provides the lowest return over time. It covers such investments as on-call deposits in banks, cash management trusts, and similar short-term interest bearing investments. Because cash is the safest investment market, it is used as a benchmark against other investments. When cash rates are low, other investments become more attractive and tends to rise in price. Cash tends to have low correlation with all other asset classes. Then it says bonds are also interest bearing investments, but involve a longer period of maturity, usually some years. Government, local authorities, parastatals and corporate borrow money from investors by issuing them with debt instruments called bonds. By holding a bond, an investor is usually entitled to an annual cash interest payment that is fixed at the time of purchase. While this locked-in interest rate may seem safer, it actually exposes the investor to more risk. If inflation or short-term interest rates go up during the period to maturity, the investor loses out. Bonds are low to medium risk investments and provide low to medium returns over time. Then it says property covers the whole ambit of real estate investments from rural estates to office blocks. It is a medium to high risk asset class with returns proportionate to this risk. Because the property market is generally adversely affected by rises in interest rates, it tends to have a low correlation with interest bearing investments, especially cash. Equities, which are shares, right, are the highest risk, highest return category of investment. Investors take a direct share in the profits or losses of companies and hence the economy itself. An important principle in examining the asset losses is the time horizon and inflation. Although in the short term, cash and bonds are somewhat safer, in the longer term, they provide less protection against inflation. This is important, guys. This means that for long-term investment, they are actually riskier in terms of maintaining real buying power while property and equities are safer long term right and then of course tax considerations generally accentuate these factors then i want you to see this i hope you can see it let me try and maximize make my screen bigger so you can see 
And then it says here, analysis of South African experience suggests that over time, the four asset classes are likely to produce the following real returns. So what is real return? A real return is the return after subtracting inflation. So if you subtract inflation, the returns of cash over the long term is zero to 1%. So cash is the lowest when you compare it to inflation, right? Bonds give between 1% to 3% returns after inflation. Property gives between 2 to 4% returns after inflation. And equities, which are shares or stocks on the stock market, return between 7 to 9% after inflation. So basically, cash has the lowest risk and the lowest returns and is suitable for money that you need in a short space of time. For example, like in one month, six months, one year, two years, etc. Bonds are low to medium risk and they also have low to medium returns and are suitable for money that you need in the short to medium term, like two to five years. Real estate is medium to high risk with medium to high returns as well and is suitable for growing your wealth for the long term like 10 years or more for example. Shares or stocks are very high risk with high returns and are suitable for growing your wealth for the long term like 10 or more years as well. Now that you know all of this information, it is important to match your goals with the correct asset based on your time frame. And guys, there's nothing wrong with allocating your money to all the different asset classes at the same time, as long as you match each goal with the correct asset. Personally, I allocate money to cash, bonds and the stock market every month based on my different goals. So I save cash for emergencies, holidays and gifts in my time bank goal save account as well as my standard bank money market account. I buy RSA retail top up bonds and I'm going to get back my money plus interest after three years. This money is purely for diversification purposes. And then I also invest in local as well as international ETFs and shares on the stock market every single month. This money is for my financial independence and wealth building for the next 15 to 20 years or so. Now, let's talk about why I chose to invest in the stock market for my long-term goals and not in rental property because a lot of people have asked me this question before and I think it's time for me to address it. Why am I investing in stocks and not in property? Firstly, investing in the stock market offers greater liquidity than investing in physical property. Liquidity means easy to buy and sell. I can easily buy and sell shares and ETFs whenever I want. Unlike physical property which can take months to buy and months or even years to sell. Investing in the stock market makes it easier to add my investments on a monthly basis and to adjust my portfolio whenever I want. Secondly, the stock market offers me more diversification options than physical property at lower cost. Since I buy ETFs on the stock market, my money is invested in hundreds and in some cases even thousands of companies from different industries, sectors and different countries. So I've got South African ETFs and shares, I've got American ETFs and shares, I've got Australian ETFs and shares, and I've got global ETFs with shares from everywhere, from all over the world. The stock market enables me to invest in local currency as well as in foreign currency. So this diversification helps to reduce my overall investment risk. But investing in physical property limits my diversification options because I can only afford to invest in one or two local properties at a time, right? Thirdly, investing in the stock market generally requires less money than investing in physical property. You can start buying shares or ETFs with as little as 50 rand, 100 rand, 500 rand, etc. This makes it easier for you as an investor to get started with the stock market and gradually increase your investments as your income increases. But buying property usually needs tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of rands to get started. Lastly, investing in the stock market takes very little of my time, like less than 15 minutes per month to do it, right? I work Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and I have 
my small business to attend to after work as well i really don't have extra time to manage anything else and that's why the stock market is perfect for me with my busy schedule and i'm quite lazy as well managing property can be very time consuming and it also costs a lot of money you need to deal with tenants you need to deal with repairs you need to deal with the municipality etc which can take up a lot of time i know that you could hire someone else to manage your property on your behalf but it's gonna cost you money right guys i am not saying that property is a bad investment physical property can be a good investment if you do your research and you've got the time the resources and the energy for it in fact there are many successful property investors all over the world right i just prefer the stock market because you can be a successful stock market investor as well and we have many examples of rich people who got rich by investing in stocks right so before you come at me in the comment section i'm not fighting with property i am just stating my preference the important thing when it comes to investing is to do what you're comfortable with something that you're going to be able to stick with and keep doing it for the long term right if i really wanted to get into property i would probably invest in property shares and etfs that are on the stock market because somebody else gets to deal with being a landlord and collecting rent etc and i would simply earn the income from the properties without me lifting a finger or signing a contract right okay guys that's it for today's video please do your own research and consult with a financial advisor before making any investment decisions if you have any comments or questions please write them in the comment section below and i'm going to get back to you as always also if you want to start investing in the stock market with as little as 50 rand for example and you need my help you can get a copy of my ebooks about investing on the stock market from my online store please see the link to my store in the description and comment section below remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching i'm going to see you in the next video bye guys